So, I tried to do this as a live stream, but I guess not to make a short video to talk about this. Not something that I really wanted to do, but since the live stream was basically... What the fuck? I figured this is good consolation for that. So, Lily Orchard is a topic that isn't new on this channel. I've talked about her a couple times in the past, and how I disagree with a lot of her takes, and as well as how she presents herself. You demand that your bullies cease their behavior, and if they refuse, grab the heaviest object you can reliably swing and beat their f <laughs> But hey, sometimes that just comes down to a difference of opinion, and I'm not saying she has to change herself just to fit my needs. Hell, it seems to be working for her, so what the hell do I know? <laughs> But that still doesn't mean I can't take issue with what she's put out to the public. Or would have if she didn't immediately delete this thread of writing tips. You see, last week, Lily put out a list of writing tips, and needless to say, the fact that they were deleted and the fact that there have been a number of people making videos and live streams talking about this should give you a clue as to what some people may think about said tips. Now, to be fair to Lily, there are actually some good tips here for writing. I mean, some of them come off as... Tip number seven, Twitter is not an appropriate place to reveal story details. The appropriate place is in the work itself. Don't sexualize teenage characters. Thanks, Captain Obvious. But they are still good tips, and as I said before, one of the worst things that a writer can do is explain things that are important in the story and supplemental material, or dare I say, done at conventions. And you're like, oh, well, we can share it at a convention. It's like, well, that's not great storytelling past us. And that's what's really frustrating about this list of 100 tips. It's that if there are some tips in here that writers should listen to. I mean, some of them are obvious, but sometimes stating the obvious can be the best thing to say to a writer or anyone who's creating a work. But that's when we get to the frustrating part, and that's when the list is filled with things that aren't really tips, but overly condescending opinions. Don't try and do what Avatar did. You can't. Even the people who made Avatar can't make another show to do what Avatar did. Choose whether you're a comedy or a drama at the start and stick to it. Don't make a comedy and turn it into a drama later on, it just annoys people. World building is like salt. A pinch can make it better, ten cups full of it will not. Like, if you don't like the stuff, that's fine. You can find that tones that change can be annoying. Go for it. There are some times where I feel that way. And if you feel that world building can be overwhelming, that's fine as well. But that all depends on the context as well as how it's being used. After all, highs and lows when it comes to action, comedy, and drama are necessary and it depends on the execution. And saying that it just annoys people when there's a genre shift over a generalization and you speak for other people, that is the last thing you want to do when you're making tips. Also, I'm not giving this advice to Lily, I'm just saying it in general, so look. In addition, telling people that they can't do something that a previous form of media did is extremely condescending, and just because you hold a piece of media in high regard doesn't mean that it's an impossible hurdle to overcome for up-and-coming writers. Again, there's nothing wrong to give opinionated tips, because sometimes getting outside opinions is great and it opens up new avenues for writers to take down. Also, I get the feeling that someone's been watching H. Bomber Guy again. To quote Miles Luna again, if you want to get a feel of what the show will be like, Watch Avatar The Last Airbender. Mary Sue is not a real criticism. It's thinly veiled misogyny. Always disregard it. Okay, I get it. Time to stop being nice. Yeah, this is the part where I have to get on the case of some of these days because now it's just devolving into basic insults and disgusting behavior. Not to mention due to the fact that Mary Sue can be seen as an issue for characters who are overpowered or be perfect. And also, I do agree that Mary Sue is a term that is overused, but at the same time, the way you go about it is all- Goblins are inherently anti-Semitic. Yeah, some of these tips are kind of parodying some borderline offensive stuff. Stuff like the whole Goblin Slayer thing that happened a few years back. And in all honesty, it's kind of insulting to instantly attribute a fictional race to monsters to an actual religious group. Like, honestly, the only people who ever made that connection were the people who made it a problem to begin with. Not to mention, there are also times where goblins are actually portrayed to be wholesome. Like that time I got reincarnated into a slime has some wholesome goblins. Vitriol does not immediately render criticism invalid. If you tone police criticism, you will likely miss something important. Mary Sue is not a real criticism. It's thinly veiled misogyny. Always disregard it. I fail to see the logic here. I hope you remember that, Lily, should you and your fans come to find this video. Fan service is a concept you should never think about. Fans who need to be serviced are not actually fans. If you have fans, those fans are already having fun and don't need to be pandered to. What the hell am I reading here? And as you can see, we now have gatekeeping on who is and isn't a fan of material. Truly the most marvelous of tips. If you do something bigger and get yelled for it, listen to the people yelling at you. Cancel culture isn't real. <laughs> I'm sorry. Cancel culture isn't real, the rage and vitriol will be gone in two weeks and you'll be a better person for it. Getting yelled at stop stopped being the end of the world at age 10. Are you bloody serious? Cancel culture isn't real? <sighs> Someone hasn't been on the internet for more than a week. The quickest and easiest way to make yelling stop is to own up to your own mistake. Don't make excuses or explain why you did the bad thing, fix it and never repeat it. Progressives are very forgiving if you give them results. Stubbornness is what gets people cancelled. 
But Lily, didn't you just get done saying that cancel culture doesn't exist? Cancel culture isn't real, the rage and Also, progressives are very forgiving? Oh yeah, that's why we have a Twitter warriors going after Chris Pratt for not going to a political fundraiser for Biden, even though he wasn't invited and people got him for being part of a church and being apolitical. Yes, progressives are very forgiving. Forced diversity is a right-wing dog whistle, not criticism. Which is why this tip flies in the face of such things such as... If your only black character is a volatile, hyper-angry brute, you're a huge turd. If the only black woman in your cast barely gets any screen time except to be fetishized or fits Rule 20, you're a huge turd. If the only trans woman in your cast is a drag queen and all about name, you're a huge turd. Wouldn't those three actually be forced diversity, though? Especially when you consider that they're being used in a negative manner to check boxes that we need to have characters like this to be diverse no matter if they're offensive or not? Wouldn't having stereotypes be a means of forced diversity in a show, though? Also, Lily, can't you think of anything more original phrases other than you're a huge turd? I know you have better insults than that. Come on, throw in a few neckbeards or centrists. Throw some curveballs. I know you're more creative than this. Seriously, I flushed down things that were more insulting than that. If you're writing fantasy and you have no issue having dragons in your world, but suddenly think people of color are unrealistic because something something medieval Europe, you're a huge turd and an idiot. <laughs> I take it back, you're not more creative than this. Because at this point it feels like Lily is just showing that she's indignant, affronted, aggrieved, source.com now has crashed on me, over things that people have complained about in the past. I think this was about The Witcher 3. Jeez, for everyone! That's Oblivion, not The Witcher! To clarify a little something on the whole Witcher thing right here, I do want to point out that my biggest issue is that people are insulting creators for this. I mean, you'd have to improve Malicious Intent on this part, and it's also, you know, you have to see if they're actually doing this on purpose, or if they are actually just trying to make a game that they want to make. I personally believe that writers should be able to allow to make what they make, so long as they're not doing anything malicious to people. And I believe that writers shouldn't be insulted if they're not doing anything malicious. That's just me, though. A what now? The only people who think Boob Armor makes sense are the people who have never touched a boob. That was truly cringeworthy. Now wait a minute, didn't you already bring this up earlier on your list? Justifying horny armor designs or horny clothing designs with sexual agency makes you a huge turd. Characters don't have sexual agency, you made them that way for just as a justification. Check the record player because Lily's starting to repeat herself. Don't be afraid of failure and backlash. If someone is screaming about how a character you made is racist, that's literally free writing advice that someone is just giving you. Look on the bright side of life for a change. But does that mean that person is complaining is automatically right? Also telling people to look on the bright side of things? <laughs> If you know anything about Lily, you find this to be really funny. D&D alignments are terrible metrics for character design. They are meant to be taken as quick reference for improvisation in a TTRPG environment and shouldn't be taken outside that environment. Are there actually people who do that? Man, what losers playing D&D! By the way, have you guys seen my newest Dragonborn character with the six-pack abs and the wolf tail? Best way to prove that I'm not a furry is to combine the dragon with a wolf. That'll prove my innocence! No! <laughs> when writing LGBTA characters, stay as far away from ho Rocky Horror Picture Show as you possibly can. Some gay people hold it up as a meaningful part of your culture. It is not. It is a transmisgenic nightmare made by an actual turf, not a reference guide for anything. Uh-oh, Lily's repeating herself again. Didn't you already make a bunch of tips about how you should stay away from certain stereotypes? Wouldn't that save you some time and tips? If your only black character is a volatile, hyper-angry brute, you're a huge turd. If the only black woman in your cast barely gets any screen time except to be fetishized or fits Rule 20, you're a huge turd. If the only trans woman in your cast is a drag queen and all about name, you're a huge turd. Then again, Twitter, everyone wastes their time on there. <laughs> Beep is an unforgivable crime, more so than killing. Killing can potentially be justified in a story without becoming a villain. Beep cannot. I'm, uh... I'm not gonna touch that one. Strong characters can still cry and need support from others. Vulnerability is not a character flaw. Hey, another good tip. Does that mean we're finally getting off this crazy train? Hardcore fans will tell you that continuity is the most important thing. They are wrong. <laughs> Also, didn't you say that people should listen to criticism? Why does this not count? Vitriol does not immediately render criticism invalid. If you tone police criticism, you will likely miss something important. I fail to see the logic here. This is too political as complaint only made by conservatives when a story acknowledges that non-white and non-straight people exist. The existence of other kinds of people is not political. Ignore these complaints. Someone give me a bat to bite its head off now, please. As long as it's not harmful or bigoted, you do not have to justify a story's decision made on basis of self and But didn't you just say not too long ago? If you're writing fantasy and you have no issue having dragons in your world, but suddenly think people of color are unrealistic because something something medieval Europe, you're a huge turd and an idiot. So which is it? Can people write what they want to write or not what they want to write? I am so confused! Vampires and werewolves are not inherently LGBTI coded, and doing so is an example of othering. They work better as metaphors for aristocracy and predators, respectively, rather than the underclass. Uh-uh! Dragula don't suck! You're a vampire! Vampires suck blood! Aw, oh, see, that's a milf. Some of the best stories ever made were written as an act of spite. That's obviously true, which is why I'm predicting this video will reach 10k views. Sex scenes are never necessary. You want to include one because you're horny, then more power to you, but any attempt to justify it is important to the story will only get you laughed at. 
I see my ass. This isn't really a tip. It's not a tip. This is more of a rule. The only real difference between an extremely close platonic relationship and a romantic relationship is that people involved choose to call it. Best friends are not something that should ever be prefixed with the word just. Normalize friends by saying I love you to each other. When the hell did this turn into relationship advice? If you write a hundred tweet long thread with writing advice, you are a huge loser with way too much free time on your hands. Get back to work and do something productive with your time. Right. Right, like deleting this entire thread, talking about giving such tips, and then complaining about how people didn't get the joke on your Tumblr account. That is so much more productive of time. Lily Orchard, the hardest working person on the internet. Tips and rules are two different words. Right, so what do these cons do when you start insulting people? Honestly, after reading all that, there's only one thing left to do. Wheel of morality, turn, turn, turn. Tell us the lesson that we should learn. Moral number five. And the moral of today's story is... If you can't say something nice, you're probably at the ice capades.